What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I am your host, Slackers. Recording this for the second time because the first time I didn't have any audio. That would have been a horrible video. <laughs> Just imagine me sitting there going... That would have been terrible. All right, good thing I caught that. But, um, yeah, welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is the Everyone Is Here tournament. We have over 100 characters. Not over. We actually have exactly 100 characters that are in this tournament. So, uh, if you want to participate, you're, the, you're more than welcome to. You know, if you're new, allow me to explain some of the rules that I will bring up on screen in just a second. And then uh, we'll jump into the matchup and uh, we'll commence from there. All right, so the first rule... That you got to keep in mind this tournament is just for fun just for fun all right don't take it too seriously uh, i mean take your vote seriously obviously but you know uh it, it's all for fun you're just here to you know, you know support a character that you like that's pretty much what this is uh and uh how do you support him well you vote for him and how do you vote simple down in the comments you type your answer to who your uh vote is for so today's matchup is generation eight pokemon and yeah, that's kind of a broad statement for a specific character, but basically if you like Generation 8 Pokemon, you want to see a one of those characters uh, from Generation 8 be playable, you vote for them. Or uh, the uh, Generation 8 Pokemon's opponent is Ribbon Girl from Arms, so if you like her, vote for her. But remember, only one vote per person. So, the rest of the rules, though, double elimination tournament, meaning a character has to lose two times before being officially eliminated. If there's ever a tie in the voting, flip a coin on camera. Best and fairest way to break that tie. And each matchup voting-wise will only last for just one week. You know, so that means uh, today's Thursday, which means uh, next Thursday we'll get the results of this one. So, very simple. So, uh, with that out of the way, let's jump into the, uh, the bulk of the video, I suppose. Yeah, let's do that. All right, Generation 8 Pokemon taking on Ribbon Girl. Both their first party, which is a good point for both of them, but I'll talk about that as well. Got a tiny bit of a, maybe an argument against uh, Generation 8 Pokemon, but again, we'll talk about that. So let's just so let's just start things off here, right? Generation 8 Pokemon. Well, okay, okay, okay. So um, first of all, first party characters, Nintendo owns both these franchises, which is great, which means they don't have to spend the money on a third-party license. Um, obviously, each character is going to have, each DLC pack is going to have its own sort of budget, right? And I'm assuming the licensing for a character probably has to come into play because uh, you're going to have to get um, a character, you're going to have to get music, you know, poten potentially a stage, uh, maybe me outfits, whatever it might be. That could all be, you know, uh, you know, I'll be Falcon punched into a video, but uh, it's all got to be taken into consideration. So, with that being said, Pokemon Generation 8, though. First party, big first party company, for, mm, company, first party series for Nintendo. And why that makes sense for them is because, well, like I just said, it's a huge, I mean, it, having Nintendo promote their own, own, own IP within Smash Bros., I, it's not out of the realm of possibility whatsoever. I mean, look at Smash. It's Nintendo All-Star Game with third-party guest characters now. But, I mean, just look at it. Just look at it. It's, it there's a very good chance this could happen. Now, um, there's quite a few things you can do. So, Generation 8 Pokemon, very broad statement again. So, take that however you want. So, for example, if you want to see a Grass Evolution, Final Evolution starter, uh, maybe that could be your vote. You know, you'd be like, ah, yeah, I'll vote Generation 8 Pokemon because I want to see the final evolution of Grookey. Now, we have no idea what that looks like or how the character could play, but, I mean, just the idea in general. So, I mean, there's other Generation 8 Pokemon that we know of right now or Galarian forms that are out there right now. So, you got characters such as maybe Galarian Weezing, Obstagoon, um, Surfetched was just revealed yesterday. Uh, you got a couple legendaries you could potentially say. There's there's a lot of different things. So, in general, if you just want to see a Pokemon from Generation 8 be playable in Smash Bros, that's how you would vote for that. Very simple. So, me, I, I really like Grookey's design. Again, I'm still waiting to see uh, the middle evolution and then obviously the final evolution out before I pick my starter once we get to Sword and Shield, but not about that right now. So, there's an argument going around. Why would you pick a Generation 8 Pokemon if you essentially you don't know who it is? Which is a very fair point. Why? How could you vote for a character you know nothing about, in a sense? Well, that's true. And and 
and the only reason I could say is because it is a big Nintendo company, or it's a big time uh, IP for Nintendo, and to promote that makes a lot of sense, and especially with the uh, whole sort of debacle that's kind of been going around with the national decks and not every Pokemon is coming back, why not promote it within Smash Bros, so you get... Um, you just get a new Pokemon, right? That's from Generation 8. You put that into Smash Bros. And maybe somebody that was like, all right, you know, I'm not getting my older character or I'm one of my favorite Pokemon. They're not in the in the game somehow. Maybe it's a legendary. Maybe it's just a random Pokemon, whatever. Maybe it's not in the game. And now you put, you know, you put the spotlight on this brand new Pokemon from Generation 8. And, and a lot of people just start to see it and go, all right. I'm liking the play style. I like the design of the character. Maybe I'll give Pokemon Sword and Shield a shot, and you know I'll make sure that uh, whoever the new rep could be uh, is going to be on my team for Sword and Shield. That's that's a possibility. All right, so it's something to think about. Plus, again, first party Nintendo's a company. They're here to make money. That's what they're going to do. They're going to make money, and well, at least they want to make money, which they should. Smash Bros. prints it, so. Uh, yeah, pretty uh, pretty a decent chance that this could happen, just saying. But, uh, yeah, um, let's move on to the uh, second character in the matchup today, Ribbon Girl. Now, I'm going to state this, my personal opinion, first and foremost. Do I think any arms rep is v pretty likely? No. Do I think an arms rep is even likely? No. Not for DLC. But the next Smash game, I think uh, arms as a series has to be a serious contender to get a playable rep. But let's talk Ribbon Girl for a second. Why does Ribbon Girl make sense? Um, well, first of all, ARMS is one of Nintendo's newer IPs. And by last count, I'm almost positive it sold over 2 million copies. Which, for a brand new IP that's unproven, untested, selling over 2 million is pretty good. Even, you know, around the launch of a new console. It's still very good. That is still very good numbers. And I believe Ribbon Girl, she was on the cover of ARMS, wasn't she? And, uh, well, why not Springman? Um, well, Springman's a different topic altogether. Oh, hello. Uh, Springman, yeah, he's a different topic altogether. He's an assist trophy. Will assist trophies get promoted? Maybe, but there might only be a couple of candidates for that to happen, and we're not here to talk about that. Let's talk Ribbon Girl. Again, arms, first party. Nintendo gets all the profits from in any individual sale. And, you know, they don't have to spend money on third party licensing character rights and all that sort of stuff. So, Ribbon Girl play style wise, obviously, she comes from this arms fighting game. So, you got a lot of cool things you could do with, like, really stretched out arm punches. Uh, maybe you can do, like, uh, something that, like, kind of twirls up and around, uh, like, above you. Like in a little helix sort of thing, I, if you guys know what that means, like a like a DNA strand where it just kind of twirls up. So kind of your arm, her arms would just kind of twist up and go up. Or so I don't know. You could do like a, a neutral sort of attack where you just kind of like have your arms and legs out and you just kind of like spin something similar to kind of like Bowser. Uh, I don't know. You got some really cool things. Uh, Final Smash I think is easy. They have a mode I believe if I remember correctly. It's called Headlocks. Scramble, Headlock Challenge, something like that. Basically, put on this mask, and then you get, like, six arms, and you just rapidly fire off punches. Uh, you just start mauling your opponent. So, uh, it could be, like, like a little cinematic cutscene that makes a lot of sense. So, you know, uh, any arms character just uh, punches, connects, and you go into this cutscene where it puts on the, the mask, and then just starts wailing away at the opponent. So, pretty simple for that. Move set is relatively easy to come up with, so... Um, while I do like the ARMS franchise, I really do, and if it uh, get, ever gets a second game, I'd, I'd probably buy it, I'll, I'll be honest. I had a lot of fun with the first one, so, uh, yeah, again, I don't think ARMS is getting a rep in Smash Ultimate DLC, but for the next, Smash Bros. definitely has to be one of the higher, uh, likely franchises to get its first playable rep. So, for me, I'm going to vote Generation 8, and solely if I had to say something, one specific from Generation 8, I'd have to go say Grookey's Final Evolution, even though I know nothing about what it looks like or how it would play. But just to finally get that grass Final Evolution starter would be perfect for me. So that's pretty much all I got for this one. So, uh, yeah, um, that's going to wrap up today. So let me know who you guys got down in the comments. You, they're going to go with Generation 8 Pokemon. Again, if you want to be, you know, you want to get specific and tell me who from Generation 8. And again, it could be a Galarian form as well. I'll count that. But uh, 
Uh, if you want to be specific and tell me, that's cool. Otherwise, you can just say, yeah, new Pokemon rep was fine with me, whatever it is. But, um, yeah, either Jenny, Pokemon, or Ribbon Girl, whoever you want, down in the comments. Again, one vote per person. But that is going to be it for this one. So a little sneak peek for tomorrow's matchup, which should be, uh, yeah, Game 5. Hatsune Miku, uh, new character in the tournament, or any tournament, so... Interesting to see how that will play out. Uh, but taking on Lloyd Irving, one of the more talked about characters right now. So, little interesting. Little interesting matchup. Maybe not uh, too in favor for, for Miku in this case. But we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But, uh, yeah, that'll be tomorrow's matchup. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. So, I hope you guys enjoyed as always. And I look forward to the voting as well. And uh, hopefully catch you guys on the next one. Peace out, everybody.